Hey, that's not a knife. That's a knife. Probably one of my favorite quotes from the Hollywood blockbuster movie Crocodile Dundee. That big Bowie style bush knife that Mick Dundee carried was both impressive and it was razor sharp. And I'm going to show you how you can get a razor sharp edge on your knife the way that I do it in case you've been struggling in attaining a good sharp razor edge no matter what kind of knife you have whether it's a hunting knife, a skinning knife, fillet knife or just a pocket knife that you like to carry every day on a daily basis. Getting a razor edge is kind of an art and uh, it's a skill that I've acquired oh, for many years now and uh, ever since I was a kid I carried a pocket knife of some kind and I had to learn to do it for myself because I didn't have anyone to sharpen a knife for me because the edge that I wanted and that I needed to do the practical chores, everyday chores that I was faced with uh, demanded a good sharp edge. So I'm going to show you how I get that type of edge on all of my knives and hopefully this will make it easier for you. Well since this is an outdoor channel just like the name suggests the Cumberland Outdoorsman there are different types of knives for different outdoor activities for hunting or fishing or just basic woodsmanship skills if you're out setting up camp or maybe just hunting mushrooms in the woods you know there are different types of knives that lend themselves for particular different uses in the outdoors. Uh, I mean, obviously you're going to want a fillet knife if you're going to fillet fish or a skinning type knife or a hunting knife for skinning and field dressing a deer. You know, there's different types of knives for different uses. But then there are those knives that lend themselves to multiple uses and I'll be covering that as well because I've got a few of those knives here behind me. Now the one knife that I carry with me every day I've got it here in my pocket, is this medium case Stockman. It's a three blade case Stockman. This is the one I carry daily. Now I work at an automotive shop so this little knife is a very useful tool. You know I use it to open packages or maybe to cut a rubber hose or strip wire or just whatever. I mean there's so many different uses for a pocket knife like this. And I'll be honest with you, if, if I don't have it on me, it feels like there's just something missing, like I left my wallet at home or something. So I carry this on a daily basis. And since I've used it today, I'm going to sharpen it and show you how I sharpen a knife so that you can attain the same type of razor keen edge. And uh, in case, you know, you might be struggling, like I said earlier, in getting a good sharp edge on your knives. So anyway, let me go ahead and go over some of these knives that I've got here on the table. Um, this one here is a fillet knife made by Kershaw. And I use this to fillet catfish or crappie or whatever else. And it's a flexible blade. Now, a lot of this stuff most of you already know, but I just wanted to go over it for those of you that didn't. And it's a good high quality steel in this knife. And I've had it for many years, filleted a lot of fish with it. Then there's this knife here that I carry in my day pack when I'm out deer hunting. It's a good combination knife for skinning and cleaning, field dressing deer. You know, that's what I use. I've also used it for field dressing uh, squirrels from time to time. Although I like a little bit of a thinner edge. That pocket knife right there, I've skinned and cleaned a lot of squirrels with it. But this one here is made by Boker. Pretty good quality, you know. Gets a good sharp edge on it whenever I need it. And these hunting knives like this Buck 119. This was a gift from my father, my late father. And it's a good heavy duty hunting knife. You know, this is something I would use if I were uh, maybe setting up a deer camp or whatever and skinning and cleaning a lot of deer. This type of knife is really good. Now Buck has some really, really hard steel and it's exceptionally hard to sharpen the steel on a Buck knife because they're famous for being truly durable blades. You know, they'll hold their edge very well compared to other knives. 
Here's a longer version of that knife. This one has a longer blade, as you can see. Not really necessary. It's kind of impractical, really, to have a knife with a blade like that, but it's rather impressive. You know, this could be considered a survival knife, actually. Both of these could. And the steel in these knives, like I said, you know, if you get a good buck knife made in the USA, it's going to last you for a lifetime, you know, as long as you take care of it. Don't break the blade. Don't put it under too much stress. Just use it for what it was intended for. Don't throw a hunting knife. You know, it's not a throwing knife. Use it for the chores that are necessary and what it's intended for, and it'll last you forever. This is another little hunting knife. This one's made in Germany. And this knife here, I mean, it, it gets a super razor edge on it. I've cleaned a lot of game with this little knife here. Got a real stag handle, just like that big Bowie knife there. And uh, it's just a really good quality little knife, you know, and I've had it for so many years now. Cleaned a lot of game with this little knife here. My grandpa actually made the sheath for it. And I keep that for sentimental reasons as well. Now that big Bowie knife that I showed you a while ago, this is an edge mark made by Solingen. This is a German knife, and this also has genuine stag handle. So it's a really good, high quality uh, steel. These are fire tempered blades, you know, and they're, they're tempered just to perfection, really, because they get a truly razor edge and they hold their edge very, very well. They're not quite as hard to sharpen as the buck knives, but the quality of steel is way up there. You know, it's really, really good steel. Now there's different methods and different tools that you can use, different types of stones, slip stones and steels and everything else to attain a razor edge, but one of the most common things that a lot of people like to use is a good quality Arkansas stone, like this one here. And I'm going to show you how I get a sharp edge on my pocket knife there using this Arkansas stone. And I'm also going to share a little secret with you folks. There's something that I have here on the table that's going to show you exactly how I get a, a super fine razor edge on just about any good quality knife. And it's very inexpensive. Actually, it's cost free. And anybody can do it. Um, there's different types of stones. You know, there's a these India slip stones, this is an oil stone. And then here's a wet stone that has two different sides on it, a, a medium coarse and then a fine edge, fine side on it here. So you can, you know, for a really dull knife, you can establish a good edge with this coarser side. And then once you get it down to being fairly sharp, you can get a really good fine edge on this fine side here. This is an oil stone. There's also these diamond sticks, like this one here. I picked this up at a gun show for $10. And this is one of the most useful tools that I've ever used for sharpening a knife. I use it for sharpening broadheads and even for, you know, for hatchets for use at camps. These diamond sticks never wear out as long as you keep them clean because it's covered with diamond dust. And I'm not sure how they get it to adhere to this metal surface but it has two different sides on it. This is a really nice long diamond stick and you get a really good sharp razor edge in no time. I'm going to show you how I do that real quick with this fillet knife. I just filleted some fish the other day and it's a little bit dull but uh, you just want to maintain the same angle you know on each stroke maintain that same angle each time And try to use the same amount of strokes on each side, you know. Don't give one side 30 strokes and the other side 5. Try to keep it about the same. And you get a good keen edge in a hurry with this diamond stick. Because it really does a great job of putting a nice micro finish on the edge of any blade. I'll demonstrate just how sharp this knife can get. 
using this diamond stick here in just a second. I'm just about there. Just a few seconds of that. Here I've got a piece of newspaper here. Went right through it, folks. Good enough to clean any fish, okay? It'll cut right through that paper just like it's nothing. That's the sheath that came with it. And try to keep your knives in, in a sheath, you know, keep the blade protected, but also protect yourself because these razor edges will cut you in a hurry, folks. Always try to uh, protect yourself and use safety as a number one precaution. Now here's another type of diamond stick here that I've got. This is also one made by Kershaw. I carry this in my day pack as well. And it has a, a really fine diamond stick on it. And you can sharpen these long knives like this fillet knife. I'll demonstrate that again real quick. It's a little bit finer. Has a finer diamond dust on it than that other one. And this will get it even keener than what it is. These diamond sticks are a good investment. Let's see how quickly it goes through this paper now. Yeah, just effortless. A good sharp knife is really safer than a dull knife because instead of putting a lot of pressure behind something to cut through it, you know, it just glides right through and makes it much more effortless and, uh, you know, it just makes the job a whole lot easier. I'm going to sharpen one blade on this little stockman of mine with this uh, diamond stick, this Kershaw diamond stick. Show you just how quick I can get an edge on this, a razor edge. Like I said, it does a micro finish job on, on the edge. The trick that I've developed, and it's, it's something that you really have to pay attention to, is on each stroke, make sure you hold the knife the same way and you're, you're cutting into whatever sharpening surface you're using. And you want to use the same angle. Don't vary your angle. Don't go, you know, flat like this one time and then, you know, more at a sharper angle this way. You want to maintain that same angle on each stroke. Be consistent about it. That's the main key to sharpening any kind of blade, is having a nice consistent angle at the edge of that blade. What you're doing is you're bringing that edge down evenly to a fine point. You know, you don't want one side like this and the other side this way. You want it even, and you don't want it rolled like this because that's what you get when you vary the angle. You want one nice edge coming down on both sides to a sharp, fine point. And that's what you attain when you hold the knife in a consistent manner like this. All right, let's see how sharp that little blade got. Wow, look at that. Man, it goes through there just like hot butter. Razor sharp, I mean. Okay, next I'm gonna use the Arkansas stone and I'll give you a close up on how I do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pan down here as soon as I get all my stone and knife and everything here in position. I'm going to lay it right here on my leg. I'm going to use some of this case honing oil here. And what this does is it keeps the metal particles suspended above the stone surface. You know, make sure it's distributed on there nice and evenly. Make sure you don't have any sand or any grit or any dirt or anything like that on your stone. And if you do, clean it off, wipe it off, and put some more oil on there. Okay? I'm 
Now, just like with the uh, diamond stick, you want to keep that angle the same on each stroke. Just like that. Just like you're slicing into the surface of the uh, stone. Try to keep all your strokes nice and even and use the same amount of strokes on one side as you do on the other. You don't want to wear one side down more than the other. And if you keep them nice and even and the same amount of strokes, you'll get a beautiful, nice, fine edge on your knife. You can see that oil accumulating on the edge of that blade. All right. Now here's another trick I'm going to show you. This is something that you can do, and something you can get practically free. Okay? This is a steel that I made, a sharpening steel, out of a shock absorber. Automotive shock absorber, whether it's a truck or a car or whatever. This is really, really high quality, highly polished steel. And it has to be high quality because of all the abuse that a shock absorber has to go through, you know, to maintain its straightness and its strength. It has to be good quality steel. And I use one of these to get a nice micro finish, razor sharp edge. I mean a wicked sharp edge using a steel like this. So, you know, if you can go to your automotive shop, I'm sure in most places they'll have a junk pile with old shocks laying around if you can find one with a nice long straight shaft make sure it doesn't have any rust on it and or that it's not broken make sure it's nice and clean like this one here I need to put a handle on this one really but I've used this for years to get a good sharp edge on just about any knife you know and I can get a really really sharp edge on any knife I got here on the table so let me show you how to do that Once again, I lay it against my leg, just like that, using the same angle that I maintained when I sharpened the knife on that Arkansas stump. What you're doing is really just polishing that edge down to a fine mirror finish, just like a razor. I mean, just like a razor. And I'll tell you what, you can get a super sharp edge on here. This is also a tool that I use when I'm sharpening broadheads, you know, for deer hunting. Because I get them so sharp that they're just absolutely wicked. You gotta be real careful with them really sharp blades or broadheads, you know, if you're gonna use something like this. I'm not going to cut the hair off my arm, but I'm just testing it right now to see how sharp the blade actually is. Yeah, I can feel it starting to bite into the bite into the hair already. It's already starting to remove some of the hair, as you can see. But I'm going to get it even sharper. Always use caution, you know, be careful. Take your time, don't get in a hurry. Don't cut your leg. If you want to, you can lay this against something else and sharpen it, or you can just hold it just like I'm holding it here. This is something that you can carry with you to a campsite. You know, you don't have to leave it at home because eventually you're going to have to sharpen your knives if you're going to use them much if you're out camping.
Oh yeah, she's really sharp now. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> it's trying to shave the hair right off my arm. That's razor, razor sharp. I mean, you know, you don't really need it much sharper than that. And that goes to show you that these case knives have high quality steel. You know, if you can attain an edge like that, where it just slices through effortlessly, you know that the steel in those blades is good quality. So like I said, you know, <clears throat> you can go out and spend a lot of money on sharpening equipment, but it's not really necessary. Um, I think I gave $20 for this little diamond stick here. What I like about it is it unscrews and then the top of it screws right in there so it it pretty much houses itself and I carry it with me in my day pack because a lot of times when I'm out hunting I'll have to resharpen my knife and this is right there ready for me to use. And then a good Arkansas stone is going to cost you a few dollars. You know, a setup like this probably 20 or 30 dollars in most places. But if you keep it clean and keep it well maintained, it'll last you a lifetime. Get you some good uh, honing oil. You can see here, gave like $3.99 for that. And one bottle will last you for years, years and years. And then finally, you know, you can buy a steel, but I found that these parts, these automotive parts like this shock absorber shaft is really great to get a good sharp edge as you saw. And it, this doesn't cost anything. You just have to cut it off on both ends. You know, you can use a cut-off wheel or whatever. Probably almost impossible to cut off with a, a hacksaw because this steel is really hard. But, you know, if you have a good hacksaw blade, you might be able to get through it. I just use a cut-off wheel because it'll cut right through it. Remember that. That's a good tip. I guess another type of uh, steel that you can use, that you can make for yourself, are the little shock absorber uh, gate lifts that are on uh, SUVs. You know, once those wear out and you got to replace them, save the steel shaft out of them because they make great sharpening tools. They're just as high quality as this and uh, really, really strong and tough because, you know, that's a relatively thin shaft in that shock, in that little shock deal that they have. It's a pressurized uh, stabilizer type shock that actually lifts the gate or lifts the, the back end of a, an SUV or whatever and, and holds it up. So it's got to be strong to hold up all that weight. And you got to have a good quality steel to be able to, you know, accomplish that. So keep that in mind. You know, there's lots of different uses for old parts like that. You don't necessarily always have to throw them away. If you can make use of that, you know, cut it off on both ends and you got you a good high quality steel for sharpening knives and other things. Well, folks, if you stuck with me this long in the video, uh, I'm going to show you my collection. This is the uh, bonus part of the video, and I really appreciate you sticking with me. So I'm going to show you what I've got here behind me in this display case. Yeah, I've got an old collection that I've accumulated over the years. This is a display case that I made for my dad because he used to collect knives years ago. But most of the really fine knives that are in here uh, are from what I've collected and what I've accumulated through the years. And most of them are case knives. This whole section right here is all case knives because case is a highly collectible type pocket knife especially. You know, and there's different patterns in here. Here you got a canoe knife. This one here is a special made canoe knife. It has a Damascus steel blade. Actually has two blades. I should show you the other one there. <clears throat> Bone handle. There's an older canoe knife. This one's been carried. Also has bone handles. And here's one. I think this is a uh, from the 90s yeah there it shows 
depiction of a Native American Indian in a canoe. Also bone handle, good high quality. And then we have these trapper knives, such as this one here, it has two long blades. This knife here is still brand new, never been carried, never been sharpened. And then here's an older trapper knife. This one here has been used some folks, but same pattern. These are good hunting knives actually, you know, you got two blades in case one of them gets dull, you can get the job done with the next one. And uh, I want to say this was a 1980 model, I believe that's right according to that marking there at the bottom of that main blade. And then we have, uh, let's see, these smaller trapper knives, such as this one here. They make them in different sizes. And that's the large version of the same model year knife, same thing. Just a larger version, just like the other two I showed you. Never been carried, never been sharpened. Still brand new. Also bone handle. Then I've got another knife here. This is a, a Whittler. This is a brand new knife as well. Really handsome. Handsome knife. It has one main blade. And then the two blades on the back. One there. It's a three blade. Basically the same as a Stockman knife, but you know, if I wasn't carrying a Stockman, I'd probably be carrying one of these Whittlers because I really like that pattern. And then we have these little knives like this peanut. This has a wooden handles, this exotic wood on here. A woodpecker there. <laughs> and here's a small stockman here. This one's uh, about the size of that peanut, maybe a little bit bigger. But this is an older knife here. This is a 1970 with stag handles. In pretty good shape. It's been carried some, but still in really good condition. And then we've got another type of knife here. This is a also made by Case. This is a lock blade. It's a copper lock. And this knife originally had Delrin handles. It's a type of hard plastic, but I replaced the handles with uh, some elk antler that I had on hand. You know, I cut that out and installed it myself because I wanted something that was custom made in this pattern. And I did a fair job. You know, it wasn't wasn't the best job, but it's not bad. Looks pretty good. Here's a smaller version of this knife. This this one here, there was a, a year or two when they made the silver script case uh, emblem on here. This is also a copper lock. A little bit smaller version. Handsome little knife though, beautiful. And then next I've got this one knife here. This is a big Bulldog here. This is a uh, 1976 version with just an enormous blade on it. This is a good hunting knife, you know, for skinning and cleaning big game such as deer. And it has uh, genuine stag handles. A lot of these knives are pretty expensive now, you know, especially for collectors that, that are looking for knives in good condition. You know, this one here has never been carried, never been sharpened, so it's like brand new still. And knives like this are a real investment because they only go up in value as the years go by. Now here's a newer K Stockman. This is fairly common now. You see these still offered now. And uh, this one here is still brand new. Never been carried enough. I think that's the box for it there. No, that's a trapper box. But anyway, I've still I've got the new box for it here somewhere. 
And then here's uh, one that's a little bit older. This one was made back in the, uh, I think 1980s, or no, I'm sorry, 1990s. That's practically a new knife, been carried very little. And here's another Case Stockman. Like I said, this is my favorite pattern. This is a brand new knife as well. Never been carried, never been sharpened. I always try to collect knives that are in good condition. I, I don't keep anything with broken blades or anything like that. There's the same pattern. 1990s model knife. And uh, here's one that's a little bit older, I believe. Yeah, this is uh, 1979. And the way you can tell is from the writing, you know, the, the style of writing, that case double X, if it's written like that, and then it has a dot. As you can see, that's one dot. In 1970, there were 10 dots, and then after each year, they took one dot away. So you subtract the amounts of dots that you have, and that gives you the year. You know, if you have five dots, then obviously that's a 1975 model. Here's another different style blade, medium stockman. It has a thin main blade. But as you can see here, it says tested double X razor edge. This is also from the 1990s. Brand new knife here. And then here's another 1970, I believe. Or no, that might be the late 1980s, I'm not sure. Uh, the S in the case insignia and the USA is a like a lightning bolt. So I believe that in, indicates that it was made in the 1980s little bit darker color on one side than on the other but still a very handsome knife and then here's one with a uh, genuine stag handle on it this is also a case stockman a little bit smaller absolutely beautiful knife and then here's one with another different type of insignia here the shield on the handle itself is a little bit different. It actually says case double X on there. Also a beautiful knife in great condition. No rust, no scratches. And then this case knife here, it doesn't have the rounded uh, bolsters. It's uh, got the square bolsters. Let's see, that's a uh, 1970 Eight, I believe. I think it has two dots on it. It's a little bit smaller, but it's a great pocket knife to carry. And then here's one that I got several years ago. This is a 1971. These blades are not stainless. These are chrome vanadium uh, blades and not a speck of rust on it. Knife's never been carried, never been sharpened. Still practically brand new. If it's stainless steel, it's going to say have a two S's on there, SS. Even the bottom, the inside of the springs there is absolutely clean. No rust whatsoever. And boy, they snap together good and tight. This is a 1971. I think I mentioned that already. Just gorgeous knife. Absolutely gorgeous. Then I've got some other knives here. Um, some of them are made in Germany. This is a Kissing Crane. I believe this is a, uh, I think they call this a trapper. I would say that's a trapper pattern. Got the main blade there and then the secondary blade right next to it. Also genuine stag handle. And then here we have a hen and rooster with genuine stag handles. Also made by Solingen, where it has Solingen steel. Look at the thickness of that blade. Really good, high quality steel in that. This is a, 
a whittler, I would say. It has the main blade on the front there and the two smaller blades on the rear. And then this is a German eye, what they call a German eye, also with genuine stag handles. These are really high dollar knives, you know, if you buy one of these brand new, but I'd say they're probably worth more being as old as they are and in great condition like these are. These are still in brand new condition. Never been carried or sharpened. And then here I've got one that I picked up at a gun show. This is not a case, even though it looks a lot like it. This is a Whittler, but it's a Winchester. There you can see the Winchester insignia on the blade itself. Made in USA. Really good, high quality knife. Really tight springs on it, you know. That'd be a great little knife to carry. But this one has never been carried or sharpened. Has the two blades on the rear. And it snaps together very well. Everything's really tight on this little knife. Stag handles as well. And then there was this uh, knife made for a while. I think they maybe are still in business. I'm not sure. This is one made by Frost Cutlery. This is a copperhead, copperhead pattern. And this one actually locks the main blade here. And it took me a while to figure out how to unlock it, but all you do is just push down on the secondary blade and it unlocks it. Also has a genuine stag handle. Frost Cutlery has a picture of a copperhead there on the main blade. Case also made a copperhead and uh, this is it right here. See it has a longer main blade there and then it has a shorter blade although it doesn't lock but it's still a really good high quality knife. This one's been carried. It's had some use folks. Uh, that one was made in the 80s. I want to say 85 or 86. Looks like four or five dots there. That's Case Copperhead. And I have various other na uh, name brand knives such as this Boker Tree Brand. Pretty good quality knives right here folks. Has that tree imprinted right on the blade there as you can see. That tree brand blade and uh, I would say it probably has that tree imprinted on every blade yep sure does that's a great little knife right there this is an older version here has real bone handles in great condition and let's see what else do we have uh, not sure what we have here. This is a Bulldog brand knife, uh, made in England, I think. Or no, that's got uh, it says Soling in Germany there on the blade. Pretty good quality knife. Has the square bolsters. Good carrying knife there. And I've got various other knives, you know, like these little case knives. This is a peanut as well. Very small but still have their practical use. And then there's other different brands of knives. Let's see this one here. I'm not sure what who makes that. This is a United made by United. This is a Trapper 2. Has a Trapper pattern. Interesting handle design even though that's bone that's genuine bone handle I'd say it's a pretty good quality knife judging by the way the uh, blades are made I've never carried this knife either it was new when I bought it still got the box here for it and then there were some knives and I think they're still being made in China uh, this is a Rough Rider. This is a Stockman pattern, just like the case, pretty much. 
has three blades on there and for the price they're really good knives I mean they'll last you for years I think I gave like 10 or 12 dollars for that knife but if you look at the craftsmanship it's not bad you know pretty good I carried one for a while this one right here supposed to be stag handle and uh, I'll be honest with you you know for the price you just can't beat it they got a good razor edge on them and uh, lock up good and tight I don't normally promote anything made in China but uh, you know I saw these knives and I kind of like the way they look so I bought a few of them here's one in uh, different handle pattern here this is uh, called gun stock because of the checkering the checkering pattern on it this is also a rough rider these knives were named after Theodore Roosevelt and his rough riders but like I say you know there's so many different types of knives that you can collect I basically always have collected case knives because they're truly high quality and they hold their value very well Well, folks, as you can see from the fading light, it's getting a little bit late in the evening, so I'm going to go ahead and close out this video. And my wife just came out here and told me that supper was ready, so I better get in there and get to it before she comes out here and puts some knots on my head. <laughs> but let me say thank you for coming along. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and you gained some useful tips for yourself in sharpening knives. I always try to include some useful things, some know-how in all my videos if I can because uh, you know I've developed a few skills over the years I may not know much but I do know a few things uh, and I always try to share that with you and trust me when I say this if I can do it so can you you know the skills that I've acquired through the years are pretty much self-taught and just gotten that way out of necessity because I didn't really have anyone else to show me much of what I've learned so I try to share as much as I can. And, uh, you know, if I can do that in this channel and share it with you, then it really gives me a good sense of purpose and makes me want to make more videos if you can find it useful. So like I said, you know, thanks for coming along. I do appreciate it very much. And thanks for watching. And also remember, if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever it may be, I hope you enjoyed as much as I do, and also remember, hit that like button, smash that bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So until next time, y'all take care of yourselves, and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. Or, as Mick Dundee would say, good day, mate. We'll see you next time.